Good afternoon, everybody. I'm pleased to be with you today as we celebrate an important piece of legislation that will benefit Cook County residents. But before we get started, I want to thank the speakers in the room and acknowledge those who share our commitment to empowering our immigrant residents in Cook County. I'd like to recognize the elected officials and partners joining us today. Representing the state, Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton and Senator Omar Aquino, who's a sponsor, and Representative Jennifer Gong Gershowitz, who's a sponsor. Our own commissioners, Alma Anaya and Brandon Johnson. Public defender, Sharon Mitchell. Hina Mansouri, who's attorney supervisor of our immigration unit. From the Resurrection Project, Ere Rendon, and from the United African Organization, Hosika Alem. Thanks for all your efforts as we work to make our county a welcoming place for everyone, everyone to call home. As I said, we're here to celebrate. Today we're gathered to commemorate the successful passage and signing of House Bill 2790. This new law, all right. This new law will expand legal protections for Cook County residents and create a path for the Cook County Public Defender's Office to represent residents in immigration cases in Cook County. This is a proud moment for us, one we've been preparing for for nearly a decade. Early in my tenure as Cook County Board President, with the help and support of Commissioner Chuy Garcia, now Congressman Garcia, we passed our sanctuary ordinance that includes protections for all immigrants in Cook County and creates a clear line, a clear line separating law enforcement and immigration enforcement. Earlier this year, the city of Chicago brought their sanctuary city ordinance in line with our county ordinance, and I applaud them for taking this step. Even more recently, on the county level, we established an immigration pilot in the office of the Cook County Public Defender. And now, with the legal backing of the state of Illinois, this pilot is getting the green light to begin representing residents in immigration court. This will allow more of our immigrant neighbors to make strategic decisions that will have an impact on their futures in this country, and in turn, allow more of our community members to have a voice in their own destinies. Now, because of this law, we will finally be able to begin the work starting January 1st of 2022, next year. This week is also Cook County's third annual Racial Equity Week, which serves as a reflection point and call to action as we strive to advance racial equity through policy and practice in Cook County. This legislation is an important step in advancing equity for our immigrant communities. And I can't think of a better time to lift up the legislators and advocates who made this legislation possible. I should also thank you. I should also acknowledge Sumiki Watkins and all of our IGA team for their good work in Springfield as well. Thank you. Today represents another step down the road toward a more just and equitable world that we all seek. I'm grateful to all of you for your commitment and ask you to continue to stand with us as the real work begins. Now, I would ask Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton to say a few words. Welcome, Lieutenant Governor. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, President Preckwinkle, for that warm introduction, and thanks to you and your team for organizing this year's Racial Equity Week. You have brought together a roster of visionaries and forward thinkers to our celebration today. And since they've already been recognized, in the interest of time, I'll just say to all of the special guests and elected officials here today, it's good to see you, and thank you for your advocacy. I'm honored to join you all as we commemorate yet another step in making Illinois a safe place for our immigrant and refugee communities. 
I would also like to thank the sponsors of this bill, Representative Jennifer Gong Gershowitz and Leader Omar Aquino for standing together to defend the rights of our constituents. This legislation was a result of you and your colleagues in the General Assembly working tirelessly to advance change. The communities that you represent count on us, and I am proud to collaborate with you to ensure that these communities are heard and supported. And of course, this legislation is also the result of Governor Pritzker's commitment to see that change realized by signing it into law. This is a crucial time to think about the progress that we have made and the work that we all have to do to ensure that we can thrive in Cook County, in Illinois, and beyond. And I'm always proud to be in partnership with him on these efforts. Civil rights icon and labor organizer Dolores Huerta didn't take no for an answer while organizing against injustice. She countered the naysayers with, si se puede, yes we can. Those three words have unified thousands in the immigration rights movement. Yes, we can dream of a better future. Yes, we can stand up for our neighbors. Yes, we can make the world a safer place for all those who face violence and oppression. Today, we celebrate what is possible when we join together and say, yes, we can. House Bill 2790 adds to our administration's comprehensive approach to immigration justice by creating a path for legal representation for immigrants during removal proceedings. As head of the Justice, Equity, and Opportunity Initiative, I have traveled the state speaking and listening to members of black and brown communities, and many of them have shared the difficulties they've experienced and the fear they have felt when becoming involved with the justice system. Navigating the justice system is already a lengthy, complicated process. Now add the stress of potentially facing deportation because there's no access to adequate resources to make your case. That creates an impossible situation for many immigrants in our country. This legislation seeks to right those wrongs in the state of Illinois because we know that having access to an attorney can change the course of lives. In many instances, legal representation can be the only thing standing in the way of someone being deported. Families are torn apart and experience immense trauma, all because some of our most vulnerable residents don't have the resources they need. That should never happen. And in Illinois, we will continue to make this state a beacon of hope for all who make their homes here. This important work would not be possible without the, the dedicated community leaders and advocates, many of whom are here today. May we give them a round of applause. Because you recognize that the immigrant story in America is expansive. The immigrant story comes from Africa. The immigrant story comes from the Caribbean and Latin America. The immigrant story comes from Asia. In fact, new immigrants are now arriving from all over the globe. Everyone deserves to feel safe in their communities, and I want to make it abundantly clear, Illinois is your home. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce a tremendous advocate who continues to provide strong leadership for the people of our state, Leader Omar Aquino. Leader. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. <clears throat> I'm going to start by reading a statement in Spanish uh, for our Spanish media and then also uh, say some brief remarks in English right after. <clears throat> el Condado de Cook es un condado donde viven más inmigrantes en el estado de Illinois. Estos residentes contribuyen a la economía y a, la y a nuestra sociedad. Cuando enfrenten un proceso legal, merecen ser representados por defensores de oficio para que tengan un proceso justo. En algunos casos, los inmigrantes necesitan navegar un juicio sin tener el dominio de idioma, del idioma inglés o sin estar conscientes de las implicaciones que el proceso legal puede tener en su estatus migratorio. Esta legislación otorga las protecciones debidas para que los inmigrantes tengan una defensa que les garantice una procuración de, just, de la justicia justa. Este es un logro hacia la ecuidad y por eso estamos celebrando. I um, want to thank everyone here uh, today. Um, it's, it's a great day. 
um, to celebrate House Bill 2870 that has already been signed into law and its effect here in Cook County. Not only has the state of Illinois has continually said that we are a welcoming state, but here in Cook County, it has, with the great leadership of President Preckwinkle uh, and many others, Brandon Johnson and, and, and Almanaya, have, have stepped forward to make sure that here in this county, everyone is welcome and people that call this home can continue to call it home and not have to think about, uh, unfortunately, being, being separated from their families. And at the end of the day, that's what def uh, Defenders for All is a continuation of that work of making sure families are staying together in our communities. It's a continuation of the work that we did in, in Springfield this year, inclusive of um, uh, other things like expanding Medicaid for undocumented folks. Last year after the pandemic, or during rather the pandemic, we were the only state, the first state in the nation to make sure that immigrant folks, seniors, have Medicaid services. And we are still in this pandemic, and a year later, what did we do? We made sure that that, that eligibility was brought down to 55-year-olds, because they're, they're, they are the folks that are still at the front lines and having to go to work day in, day out, and they are from the communities that unfortunately have been ravaged by this pandemic. But these are the things that make sure that when we step forward to, to address these issues, that we are taking care of those that take care of us, that many times, unfortunately, feel like they have to live in the shadows but not here in Cook County and not in the state of Illinois. That's why we also passed uh, the Illinois Way Forward Act so that we could end that relationship with ICE because ICE have, have a certain role, but it's not in the state of Illinois to lock people up and keep them uh, he, uh, here and then deport them away. That's not what you know, our, 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 our state and this county is about. And I have a great partner in the House that we were both uh, honored to have been asked by great advocates who really are the reason that this, this uh, bill became law. And that, that, um, that state rep who, since the moment she's got into the General Assembly, has used that expertise in, in, in being a lawyer and a, specifically uh, an, immig an immigrant lawyer to, to stand up for all immigrant families throughout the state of Illinois. And it was my honor to, to run this bill with her, and that's Representative Jennifer Gong Gershwitz. Thank you, Senator, for those kind words. Good afternoon, everyone. First, I want to just start by thanking President Preckwinkle, Lieutenant Governor Stratton, Senator Aquino, Commissioners Anaya and Johnson, Public Defender Mitchell, my colleagues in the General Assembly, and most importantly, our staff. No one passes a bill through the General Assembly alone, and I want to thank Speaker Welch and President Preckwinkle and her team for giving me this opportunity to champion Defenders for All in the House of Representatives. The right to due process is a bedrock principle grounded in our commitment to fundamental fairness and equal justice under law. I was proud to introduce House Bill 2790, better known as the Defenders for All Act, because our justice system has not been living up to that promise. Immigrants facing removal proceedings often do so with no legal representation, effectively denying them due process. A universal right to counsel for those who cannot afford a lawyer and broad access to legal information should be essential components of our U.S. immigration system where the need for counsel cannot be overstated. Nearly a century ago, Justice Brandeis said, deportation can result in loss of both property and life or all that makes life worth living. While technically civil in nature, Removal proceedings present exceedingly high stakes. The potential loss of homes and livelihoods, permanent separation from US citizen and lawful permanent resident family members, banishment of a family's sole breadwinner, or even persecution, torture, or death. And yet, immigrants face deportation proceedings with no right to counsel. Unrepresented individuals in removal proceedings are inherently disadvantaged in an adversarial system where the government is always represented by an experienced attorney. Immigration law is highly complex and technical, so much so 
that it can take a licensed attorney who has attended law school for three years and passed the bar exam to have the experience necessary to effectively tackle an immigration case. Many qualified lawyers steer clear due to the sheer enormity of the challenge and an unacceptable backlog of cases in our immigration system. I know because I have experienced this firsthand as an immigration lawyer and a human rights attorney. This amounts to trying death penalty cases in a traffic court setting. The scales are weighted heavily against those who cannot afford a lawyer. We provide a lawyer in criminal cases precisely because our justice system recognizes that an average person cannot possibly be expected to understand, much less navigate, this complex labyrinthian system without legal representation. Navigating the immigration system requires technical expertise, and our fundamental notions of due process demand that someone has access to a court-appointed counsel. Very few immigrants possess the famili familiarity with the American justice system or appropriate legal background to adequately defend themselves without legal representation. For the many immigrants who are not fluent in English, this process is even more daunting and it's biased. This is another example of the kinds of bias and inequity that pervade our immigration system and put immigrants at a profound disadvantage. Defenders for, for all will help to tip the scales of justice more evenly to ensure the integrity of our immigration system. That's why I'm so proud to stand here today with the colleagues and the advocates who have made this a reality. With this legislation now signed into law with the support of our governor, Immigrants in Cook County will have access to publicly funded counsel for the first time, taking an important step forward to ensuring universal representation and one less obstacle to equitable justice. I want to thank all of you who are here today who made this a reality, and thank you for your support of this important legislation. Uh, thank you, Lieutenant Governor, Leader Aquino, and Representative Gong Gertrowitz. Now we'll hear from our commissioners, beginning with Alma Naya. Thank you, Madam President. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I am extremely proud to be here today, and what a wonderful day to kick, well, basically to have our second day of racial equity and to celebrate it here in Cook County. Uh, first of all, I do want to just take a second and just thank all the defenders for all uh, in the room. I want us to give a, them a round of applause. The advocates. <laughs> if it wasn't for them, we would not be here today. Uh, and, you know, we wouldn't even be celebrating today. So I thank you all um, from the bottom of my heart um, for, for joining us. Uh, as an immigrant myself, I'm happy uh, to be here with you all today as we celebrate the win for the immigrant community. Last November, Cook County made history by becoming the largest county in the nation to fund an immigration unit. This newly established immigration unit is a major advancement for the rights of immigrants in Cook County. This is an effort that has been years in the making. Just two years ago, a delegation of Cook County government and advocates, including the previous public defender Campanelli, the president's office represented by Lynetta Haynes-Turner and myself, took a trip to San Francisco to talk to elected officials, the public defender and staff to learn about the wonderful work they were doing to protect undocumented and documented immigrants in court. They talked about the path and the lessons learned, all extremely valuable. But the most impactful thing for me was getting a chance to sit in immigration court, to see young people, children sometimes, stand there vulnerable to the system, and to see really the impact that the public defenders had. The stories that we heard were so similar to the stories that I hear from my constituents since I represent uh, the biggest concentration of immigrants in Cook County. Of course, with the exemption that 
my constituents didn't have a public defender on their side. This happens across the country. Immigrants are left struggling defending themselves in immigration court or struggling to find means to pay a private immigration attorney. This, of course, impacts black and brown immigrants more than any other group. This is why this bill is so important. It changes lives. It changes the outcomes, and it prevents separation of families. Everyone, regardless of their immigration status, should have the fair representation. And with this bill, it marks a step forward in that direction. I want to make sure that I thank former public defender Campanelli, our current public defender Sharon Mitchell, Defenders for All Coalition, the President's Office, Senator Omar Aquino, Representative Jennifer Gongerskowitz for their support of this bill. We are only at the beginning of what is a new moment for immigrants in Cook County and in the state of Illinois. We know that our immigration system is broken. We know that the former federal administration made things worse. And we, say, we cannot say this um, enough. We need to continue to work collaboratively to make sure immigrant rights are a priority of the Biden administration. With the Cook County Lytton Criminal Courthouse and the Cook County Jail in my district, the impact on our court system, on immigration, on the immigration community, sorry, in the immigrant community is deeply personal to me. I look forward to continue to work closely with the Public Defender's Office as the immigration unit continues to grow and ensure that it makes our constituents have legal guidance and resources that they deserve. Thank you everyone for joining us and um, Lieutenant Governor um, Dolores Huerta used to say, si se puede, but here today we say si se pudo. Yes, we made it, si se pudo. Buenas tardes, me llamo Alma Naya, soy la comisionada del séptimo distrito del condado de Cook. Yo represento al distrito que tiene la concentración más grande de inmigrantes. Hoy quiero agradecerle aquí a todas las uh, personas que fueron parte de este gran logro, ¿verdad? Y yo como inmigrante estoy feliz hoy día de estar aquí con ustedes celebrando esta victoria para la comunidad de inmigrante. El noviembre pasado, el condado de Cook hizo una historia al convertirse en el condado más grande en toda la nación en finalizar una unidad de inmigración. Esta unidad de inmigración recién establecida es un avance muy importante para los derechos de inmigrantes en el condado de Cook. Ese es un esfuerzo, un esfuerzo que fue realizado durante años. Apenas dos años, una delegación de aquí del gobierno de, uh, del Cook viajó a San Francisco para hablar con los funcionarios electos y defensores públicos para hablar sobre el trabajo maravilloso que estaban haciendo para proteger inmigrantes indocumentados en las cortes. Hablaban sobre los caminos y las lecciones aprendidas, todas sumamente valio valiosas, pero a mí lo que más me impactó es estar en la corte y ver a, los, a las personas inmigrantes tratar de defenderse, pero con la excepción que tenían a un defensor público que estaba abogando para ellos. Estas historias son muy similares, con la excepción aquí en el condado, que no hemos tenido esa oportunidad de tener uh, defensores públicos, pero hoy día estamos celebrando esto, porque sin esta ley, nuestras comunidades inmigrantes de, de tasa ne um, negros y, y, um, y latinos son los más impactados. Y esta, esta, esta ley es muy importante porque cambia vidas, cambia los resultados y evita la separación de familias. Quiero agradecerles a todos los que están aquí por, toda su, por abogar, pero específicamente por no darse por vencidos. Fue una batalla dura y, y largosa, ah, pero aquí estamos y sí se pudo. Muchísimas gracias. Good afternoon. Thank you um, to my awesome colleague, uh, Commissioner Anaya. And in the interest of the heat and this vest that I'm wearing today, I'm going to, um, it was a good idea when I got up this morning, um, but I'm going to abbreviate my comments. Thank you, Madam President, and to uh, the Lieutenant Governor, who reminded me that I wasn't alone um, feeling this, uh, this heat this afternoon. So 
I don't know if that's a, a budgetary thing, Madam President, or not, but <laughs> let's, let's get that right this year. Um, but, but one of the things that I appreciate about this moment, and thank you to all of the advocates um, who have been quite expressive in this moment, that every time we get an opportunity to do something dynamic and bold, that the new leadership that is upon us, Madam President, I'm just tracking this, all the new folks that get elected, they're not apologizing about their values. And so I'm grateful that we have an energized um, elected leadership that is prepared to unite us and that black, brown, and white folks all over the state of Illinois are committed to dismantling the institutional racism that, uh, racism that has um, stratified our, our neighborhoods for far too long. But there is something that I do want us to pay attention to as we think about our immigrant population. And the Lieutenant Governor alluded to this, one in 10, and this number is rising, of black folks that live in the United States of America are foreign born. But here's what's interesting though, maybe not so in interesting, but quite typical. You know, though we make up 10% roughly of of the immigrant population or just the population of black folks, we make up about 20% or 25% of those who are um, set to be deported without cause. And so here you have yet again um, a mean system that continues to target black folks in particular. But isn't it a great day when black and brown folks can come together and unite under one voice and saying that when we're defending all we're defending the immigrants who have been seen invisible for far too long in this country. And so that's why I'm grateful for the leadership of the president of this county, as well as the, the new public defender that we have, to make sure that there is a commitment to defending the good of the public. And those are the individuals that make up our neighborhoods across Cook County and the state of Illinois. And that's why I'm proud to stand in solidarity with the advocates as well as our elected leadership to bring real justice to the people who help make this country strong. And thank you. And with that, I have the honor and privilege to introduce another brother who makes it uh, worthwhile, is the public defender of Cook County, uh, Sharon Mitchell. Uh, Commissioner Johnson's wearing a vest and I'm wearing a suit, so same position. Uh, my name is Sharon Mitchell, Jr., Cook County public defender. Uh, you know, I stand before you today on behalf of the 600 attorneys and investigators, support staff, and other specialists from the Public Defender's Office that have dedicated their careers to ensuring that justice is found in the legal system. I want to thank President Preckwinkle for her leadership, along with the Cook County Board of Commissioners, led by Commissioner Anaya, and led by Commissioner Johnson on this issue for helping us get this done. I also want to thank our partners at the state, Lieutenant Governor, Thank you so much for your commitment to justice and to equity and to opportunity. See what I did there? Um, and that commitment is illustrated by your presence here and Governor Prisker's signing of this bill. Thank you so much. I also want to thank uh, Leader Aquino uh, for getting this bill through the Senate. It was not uh, easy. And Representative Gong Gershowitz, who used her experience to make this happen. I really appreciate it from our entire office. You know, this law allows us to answer the call of communities. Um, we know that individuals who go to immigration court without a lawyer are far more likely to get a worse outcome, not because of some fact in their case, something about their case, but solely because they do not have a lawyer. We want to change that, and at the Public Defender's Office, we are happy seeing that we represent so many people who have dual consequences in the criminal and immigration uh, uh, systems, we are happy to help to address that justice gap. However, as everyone knows, we as Cook County Public Defenders have a ton on our plate. That's why I'm so happy that we were able to get support from the foundation community uh, to take advantage of this change of law uh, so we can take advantage of it uh, without taking away from capacity for our work that we do every day, representing individuals who are in criminal, uh, juvenile, traffic, and family protection court. So we're gonna have the opportunity to continue that great work at a high level and increase that work, but also do this work in immigration. I also wanna thank the Cook County Board uh, for their support of this project, who provided matching funds. Um, so with that said, 
um, you know, I always think about a quote um, at times like this. You know, lawyers, like folks from my office, like me, we can advise what's possible based on the law, but it is advocates, it is community who create what's possible. This is a perfect example. We can advise what's possible, but the Defenders for All Coalition created what's possible. And without them, we would not be here and we would not be delivering these services. We have, we have, we have to give them a round of applause. At the Public Defender's Office, we are committed to doing this work. We are excited to get it done. I want to thank all the stakeholders behind me that have made this happen. I want to thank all the folks that pushed us to do this and made it happen. Thank you so much. And now I would like to introduce Hina Mansouri, who will be uh, heading up immigration in our office, and we'll talk a little bit about this work. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Hina Mansouri, and I am the attorney supervisor of the Immigration Unit at the Law Office of the Cook County Public Defender. I am so grateful to be here today to celebrate the fact that our office will be able to take on immigration cases and defend some of the most vulnerable individuals against exile from the United States. As you all know, immigrants facing deportation, unlike individuals facing criminal charges, are not provided counsel despite the extremely complex nature of immigration law and high stakes involved. Indeed, 70% of individuals in ICE custody lack counsel and are forced to defend themselves against experienced ICE attorneys. Additionally, immigrants who have had contact with the criminal court system, like our existing clients, are doubly punished for that contact, facing not only criminal consequences, but deportation or an inability to obtain or maintain lawful immigration status. HB 2790 allows our office to even the playing field at least a little bit by taking on some of these individuals' cases in immigration court, holding the federal government to its burden and hopefully improving the system for all. I want to thank everyone who helped make this possible, and I look forward to taking our first cases early next year and fighting the good fight on behalf of immigrants. Thank you. Just a second, do we want to speak, we want Resurrection and United African Organization to say a few words. There are advocates. Um, Ms. Rendon, is that right? And then uh, Fasika Alem, is that right? Okay, go ahead. I don't care which one. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Fasika Alem and I am with the United African Organization. UAO is proud to have been a part of this campaign and to be at today's celebration because we believe all immigrants, regardless of race or country or, or of origin, will have access to legal representation in their deportation cases. And we all know the same prejudices that exist in a criminal legal system extend to the immigration system. Just as black and brown people are disproportionately targeted by police, Black and brown immigrants are also disproportionately vulnerable to, the immig to immigration enforcement. In fact, speaking for black immigrants, because that's the group we represent, are more than three times likely to face deportation due to criminal grounds. And oftentimes, many are left to fight for their lives alone without legal representation. Therefore, we believe universal representation is essential for our communities and HB 2790 and the Immigration Unit in the Cook County Public Defender's Office seeks to assure that we all have that fundamental right. We want to thank uh, President Preckwinkle, Representative uh, Gon Gershowitz, Senator Aquino, Governor Pritzker, uh, Lieutenant Governor Stratton for, their, for being a voice for justice. We want to thank our commissioners, Commissioner Anaya and, and Johnson for their leadership. Thank you. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Me llamo Ere y estoy con Proyecto Resurrección. Soy inmigrante con DACA y mi familia es un indocumentada. Proyecto Resurrección se orgullece de haber sido parte de esta campaña y de celebrar hoy aquí con todos ustedes. 
Creemos que todos los inmigrantes, independiente de su raza y país de origen, tienen el derecho de representación legal en sus casos de deportación. Y el derecho de un abogado debe, no debe importar si tienes los fondos para pagar es, a pagarle a ese abogado. La ley HB 2790 y la unidad de inmigración de los defensores de inmigración en los defensores públicos del condado de Cook busca asegurar que todos tengamos el derecho a un abogado. Agradecemos a la presidenta Prakwenko, a la, a la representante en Gangershwitz, al senador Aquino, al gobernador Pritzker por firmar, uh, por firmar la propuesta de ley uh, y al aviso a gobernadora Stratton por ser una voz a favor de toda la justicia. Al, también agradecemos a la a comisionada uh, Alma Anaya y al comisionado uh, Brandon Johnson. Gracias. Yes. Uh, anybody from your staff? Uh, 100, excuse me. Not, not a fact I know. I am informed it's 180,000. Is that right? In Chicago. In Chicago. Okay. That, that doesn't include the rest of Cook County, so I can't answer the question fully. She says. 180,000 in Chicago, which is half the population of the county, so presumably it's a larger figure. 